Our study uh, that was um, intended for locally advanced gastroesophageal adenocarcinoma um, was designed in an era or a time that uh, perioperative uh, magic regimen or epirubicin, platinum, and, and fluoropyrimidine was considered a standard option for gastric cancer, G-junction cancer, and esophageal adenocarcinoma, um, as well as uh, the cross regimen, neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy with carbo platinum paclitaxel in the esophageal and G-junction adenocarcinomas. And so at the time, there was not any um, perioperative study evaluating the utility of fulfirinox uh, chemotherapy, which is, of course is 5-FU, arenotecan, and oxaliplatin. And um, there were some uh, other studies with triplet chemotherapy with platinum taxane and fluoropyrimidine, namely DCF, and also phase two study of perioperative FLOT. However, the large phase three FLOT4 study was um, uh, not reported uh, at the time of the design of the study. So we intended to evaluate um, fulfirinox and, and its utility in this setting, uh, uh, having no, knowing that fulfirinox was a, an active regimen in uh, pancreatic cancer in the uh, stage four setting and uh, also in colon cancer in the stage four setting, and knowing that these three agents, fluoropyrimidine, arenotecan, and um, oxaliplatin were active in the stage four uh, setting of gastroesophageal cancer individually, or in combinations in doublets. And um, that said, we, we wanted to improve on the uh, carbotaxel RT and or the epirubicin-based triplet regimens of magic regimen um, by potentially having a better uh, R0 resection rates and pathologic response grades uh, compared to those uh, regimens and also with better tolerability. And um, as well as comparing to the taxane triplets that were probably better in the phase two settings um, uh, at face value compared to say epirubicin triplet therapy, but with overlapping toxicity with neuropathy namely um, and other toxicities like higher risk of alopecia with the taxane and, and oxaliplatin. So with fulfirinox, we set out for these surrogate endpoints of survival with R0 resection and pathologic response grade. The other unique aspect of this study was that um, for renotecan, uh, it has been known now for a few decades that UGT1A1 enzyme uh, genotypes uh, in, in uh, patients can help to predict tolerability of the drug. And essentially, in short, there are three major uh, classes uh, or categories, and those are um, those that are normal metabolizers, so they would be at low risk of, of toxicity, and there would be intermediate uh, metabolizers that would be at intermediate risk, and then there'd be um, low metabolizers that would be at high risk. So that low um, metabolizer high risk group is about 10% of, of population and the intermediates are about 40% of the population. So we wanted to tailor therapy based preemptively based on genotype and dose modify the arenotecan accordingly. So patients that were high risk would get half the arenotecan dose that would be considered standard and the intermediate group would get an intermediate dose, 135 milligrams per unit squared. And the overall endpoint was um, R0 resection rate and pathologic response rate, um, both of which um, were then eventually compared to the ultimate FLOT4 study, which, which reported in the interim during the accrual of this particular study, and, um, and also to the cross study. So inevitably, these cross trial comparisons uh, we have to look at uh, cautiously, but you know that's the best that we have until we have prospective randomized study. So and the outcomes were very promising. Uh, first of all, it was very tolerable, and when looking sort of side by side to tolerability of the other regimens that are now considered standard, FLOT and uh, carbotaxel OT would be um, uh, improved tolerability. And um, in terms of uh, overall efficacy, the R0 response rates were on par with those of either other standard regimen. And in fact, they were slightly higher, 92% in the intention to treat group. And um, particularly where R0 resection is thought to be a risk um, is in proximal disease, esophageal disease, type one Seward's. And um, there, there the response rate was, in, in those who went to surgery was 100%. Um, and so, um, you know, the, the concern that having a, a radiation free arm um, in terms of treating these patients, I think was alleviated as that was the 
primary endpoint of the study. And uh, similarly, the pathologic response grade, um, grade one response of less than 10% uh, of, of residual disease at the time of surgery was seen on par with what would be what was reported with the FLOT4 study. So overall, this phase two study is a single arm study with surrogate endpoints of survival, pathologic response grade, and um, R0 resection was promising, uh, met their endpoints, and um, in the future might be a good alternative for patients, say for example, that have severe neuropathy coming into this and, and say for example, diabetic neuropathy and you want a, a toxic agent, especially using Fulfirinox, and certainly um, it may be warranted in a larger phase three setting to evaluate for, um, uh, to become a new standard option for care.